This is a recording for the COPA project, Coastal Uplands, Heritage and Tourism. My name is Daniel Carey. Today is the 27th of July, 2023. And I have with me here, Chris Forrestal. Uh, thank you, Chris. Can you confirm for the recorder that you're happy to take part in this project? I can. Thanks. And could you spell your name for the recorder, please? F-O-R-R-E-S-T-A-L. Lovely. Um, I thought we might just start by um, by talking about your um, your your childhood or your um, or your 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 early life. What are your um, what are your early memories? Well, sure. My early memories is sure. Uh, my early memories is I was lifted up in the bed uh, one night, and I was I was very young. I, I was in nineteen and forty one when the air German airplane fell on the mountain. Okay. And uh, I was born in thirty nine, but my mother lifted me up, and I can I can just I can I can see the light still. Look out through the window. Okay. Okay. Uh, Where was home? Home, home was up in Nakatober, up in right off Nakatober, yeah, at the bottom of the Black Stairs, yeah, yeah. And my mother came from up higher on the Black Stairs, yeah. And but uh, I, I was in a house down lower, yeah. On the, on the road, yeah. Where did you go to school? I went to school in Ratnewar, yeah. I went to school in Ratnewar, and uh, I walked to school in Ratnewar, and I remember uh, my father uh, used to take contracts to repair the roads, the rural roads that time. You'd, uh, they'd have to be contracted, and you have to f fill them with stones and cut the briars and clean the grapes and all. And I remember going down through Killan in the horse and car, to go down to a place called Killian Lane down there and this guard came out of the barracks and he was a man by the name of, name of Tom Rourke from the County Clare and he had a waistcoat on him and a whole heap of middles, hurling middles that he won for Clare and he'd be talking to my father now and then but this time anyway he looked at me in the car and he said when is this young fella going to go to school? And he frightened the life out of me. I wasn't after going to school that time. I don't know what age I was. I, 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 near near a honeymoon. But I, I, I couldn't pass the barracks after I, he tormented me. And that, that, that's, an, that's a, my first image of something like that. Okay. Yeah. What, what are your memories of school? My memories of school is, 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 is fairly good. Yeah. I, I had to walk to school, of course, three miles to school. And we could go the road some places and we'd have a shortcut. We'd go through the fields. And in going through the fields, we'd be going down through a rat who, a rat that brings you out to rat newer had be, a, we'd be taking off an apex off of the road and going down a short cut and on to school. And a, a good few of us would be going along there and we'd go across the fields and down and there'd be turnip sowed in a field and maybe we'd crack a turnip off of a stone and divide the hope and he would be off it and go on, <laughs> yeah. And, and that was it, yeah. What was, um what was the what was the house like or what was what was home like what was the home like yeah i was just a little i was a bungalow a bungalow home like yeah yeah and 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 that was okay and a few outhouses around it like you know and that was all it was only after being built not long before that you know yeah this is um it, it, this is the time before electricity is it or oh there was no electricity, electricity at all okay there was no electricity at all but the lads me father and me uncle uh God forgive him, uh, my uncle was a genius at uh, uh, everything, and he made, they made a water wheel, and they put it in the river, and they put a, a DC dynamo on it, and they made light for the house. And they also charged the batteries in the 50s for the, the wet batteries for the, for, for the radio. Okay. And people used to come with the batteries and, and get them charged up the river, okay. up, up to the river, to the water wheel. And so you, you had you had lights before before other people then did you? Had, you yeah, had, yeah, we had, yeah, 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 yeah. I come down on poles down from the river, down the field, the back of the house, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Because electricity must have made a huge difference to the to the area. Oh, uh, electricity made a huge difference, but it didn't come up for it didn't come for a long time up, up above with us. But then we had the tilly lamp and the hurricane lamp and all that stuff, you know. Okay, okay. And, and, uh, that was the way we carried on, and were, I tell you what, a lad had on a bike. I seen a a a a, a, a carboid lamp, carboid, yeah, 
And what did you do for what did you do for 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 fun when you were when you were growing up? How did you how did you spend your time? What did we do for fun? Yeah, sure. We 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 done all we could. We could devil me into nothing else but uh, but uh, we used to hunt and do all. I would follow the hunt and we'd do things like that and kick an old ball around. I remember a crowd of us gathered up a few pence and we gave it to a woman from up the road there and she was going to town and she bought the football. Sure, it was the greatest yoke ever was. A rubber a, a, a a football. Where, where did you play football? We used to play football over in, uh, in um, Foley's over here, Tom's re- relations over there in that place. Yeah. And... and Around the cross of Killan here, they used, to, they used to hurl up in the field there at Clint's on the corner there, the records used to hurl and that's all. And all the different, they played skittles then, they were playing skittles then and all that crack, there was skittles nearly everywhere at that time, you know, and things like that. And okay. doing a bit of fishing and fishing for trout in the river we used to, the river passing down by my house, seen from the black stairs, and there used to be lovely trout in and we used to catch them, yeah. Things like that. Okay, a lot of a lot of um, a lot of outdoor activities. Oh, it was all outdoor activities. Out all outdoor. Gathering sprigs for the fire then, and bringing home the cows, and doing all that cracking, digging potatoes, and doing everything like that. From the time you were able to walk, okay. you know, you were doing all that. Yeah. What What about the mountain? You were saying, obviously, you you, you grew up kind of close to the. Oh, close, t- to, the close to the black stairs. Oh, sure, the mountain was great. Yeah, we caught the tor- turf. Used to be caught on the mountain. And then the, the, there was lads cut, but I didn't see much of that was before my time. But you'd see the the rim limbs where the, where the, where the cut, they used to cut the stones, cut the granite stones. But there were in that in that area now there was three types of stone. There was a stone the, the, like the, the flint stone, you know, the quartz I think they call it, ain't it? And then there was another stone, a bell metal. The, the, I heard the lads saying it was. And there was the granite stone, and then there was the sandstone. And there was a spring mound flag as well they called it up there. All the different stones. But what I found out about what they called the bell metal stone, if you went to go drill it or bore it or hammer it, there was a kind of a sp- smell off of it like carbide or something, whatever was in it. And I was telling the doctor about it one time and he wanted he wanted dust over it to experiment it, but he, we know he never got it, I think. But, but then there were fears you couldn't break them, they were hard like. And that, there'd be that kind of stones in the land, okay, you know. Okay. And you'd meet them if you, when with a young lad then and got able to follow the horses and all, you'd be ploughing, and and you'd have to hold the plough and all. But but uh, if you if if you hear a stone, you could get a belt of the handle to plough under the chin, <laughs> or in the ribs, you yes, know. Yes. And all, all that crack, doing all that work. You you were you were you were kind of helping out from a from an early age, were you? I I was I was and I was used to be over at my uncle's the whole time where my father came out. They had they had trashing sets. In 1927, they bought a steam engine in Drumcolacher on the borders of Cork and Limerick, and drove it home. And they were a week coming home, and the went down for it and a hackney man lived here brought him down and his name was Bob Bingens and he brought him down and there was me uncle and me father and another big man by the name of Jim Sinnott and and they, they all went down anyway and they were a week coming home but that was in 1927 and to the day he died me father said it was the warmest time he remembered warmest year he remembered they couldn't get water for then you know ain't coming home you know and they came home then and they came home all up through Kilkenny the bought the bought a mill and they came to Thomas Thompson's a carlo and they bought an elevator we call it a pinch a pitcher for pitching the straw and the people came to meet him went on to Kiltaley to meet him and a Mrs Brennan that lived up there gathered up a crowd and lit a bonfire uh, to, for the coming home, coming the, the, the engine. Oh wow! And from from twenty seven on, they were contractors. They had tractors, uh, iron fortunes and Alice Chalmers and all. And I spent mo- most of my time there with them at okay. that. And I remember I was ten or eleven, and my uncle, I never forgot, let let me drive the tractor, and I was in no field, and I never forgot. It. Yeah. What 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 kind of stuff would you been would you been doing? What what were you helping out with? 
They'd be helping a wood harn or something on the tractor, you know, and we'd let you drive harn because if you made a mistake, you wouldn't be like plowing, you know, you, you wouldn't do too much damage and you, all like that. And you'd have to pick pick stones and pick stuff and you'd generally going around, you know. Okay. And they had a forge, they had a blacksmith's forge done all their own repairs. And I, I'd be there blowing the bellus, uh, blowing the fan. And they made, they made an elevator themselves. They, 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 they got in a lad that was a blacksmith and his fa- himself and his father and I was always blowing the bellus and uh, I knew an awful I learned an awful lot about iron and I le- learned how to self weld and weld the, the forge weld okay. and I learned the hall and was able to know when they to be burning and too hot and hot not hot enough and all and the blacksmith I met him after in years years and years I met him after and a lad brought him over to me in the graveyard in Ratnure and he said you don't know this man he says to me and I looked at him and I had a fashion of telling him, he, he was a great man for drumming, and he would drum on with two punches and anvil, and the next thing the iron would start melting. And I'd let a roar at him, the iron is burning, the iron is burning. And he'd be mad with me because my uncle would be here, he'd be boring holes with a drill or something somewhere. And he'd be, and I looked at this fellow in the graveyard after years and years of him being in England. I said, the iron is burning. And he know me all right, said your man, you know. And, that, that, all that. That's brilliant. That's and brilliant. I learned how to how to how to weld, and the the they made the flux to, 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 to dip. You dip the you dip the, the red iron in the flux, and they made the flux out of broken po- porter bottles. Brought broke the porter bottles to break them in a pig truck or something with a stone, and and make it like sugar, and put that into it, and dip the red iron into that, and that had acts as a cleaner as a flux, porter bottles. Yeah. Um, how would you describe the, the this this area to um, to someone who hadn't hadn't been here before? What, what, how would you kind of describe the the the, the Blackstairs region? I describe the Blackstairs region as heaven because there's no pollution over you anywhere. You're the same as you were living on the eve of the house. That's all going down the eve so the pollution is all going down the country. There's nothing. There's nothing over the over along by the book of the back stairs and all. There's no pollution to come down off of it. It can rain away and snow away. Do you know what I mean? You'll have floods, all right, but you won't have no pollution because it can't be put over you. And that's I just and it's, just, it's a heavenly place to be, and quite. It's, it's real quite now. Not because I have seen it, because I'm from it. You know, anyone I'd be in it around that area would. And I, I have a couple of places up there that I, that I have, and, and it's a quiet, it's very quiet, yeah, very quiet, very quiet. When did you, when did you finish school, or what did you do, what did you do when you were, when you were done with school? When did I finish school? Oh, I finished, I finished school sure when I, wait till I was fourteen or so. Okay. And then, then I was, I used to be out with the trash and then, and then I drew milk into cans, to the creamery where I followed the lorry for a fella, and I walked in to serve my time in a garage. I done all that, and I I done repair work. I repaired a lot of machinery for people. I I thank God I was gifted with repairing and seeing a way out with stuff. I could repair anything and make anything, and and I I could and I learned it all from being interested in it, from looking and being interested in it. I learned it. A man came in to me one even that I was friendly with, and he said and he had. He, he, I was only a young lad this time too, not long after leaving school, and he had a whole lot of bullseyes, a couple of bags of sweets and all. And he had two sheets of galvanized, about the size of the table there, now, uh, three by four or three by five, okay. a couple of sheets left in, in the back of the car. And he had sweets and all, and he says, we're going for a spin, me and you, and we have to keep our eyes open. We're going to where the travellers are to get two buckets made. But when we come home, we have to be able to make the buckets ourselves. And this was where the sweets went to the travellers, the young lads. And they made the buckets and for us and all. And we came home and we made the buckets. And I made the Kahoka bucket and make it if I want to. And that's how we learned that. It was just like the power of observation. You, yeah. You, you weren't. You, you didn't do a formal apprenticeship. Right? No, 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 no. And I welded blocks in engines, and lads would tell you I welded blocks in engines, and I welded yokes that couldn't be done. But 
I got that from mother and father because everything and uncles and all everything that broke had to be fixed and it was only a patch on the back of your trousers that had to be fixed we came to the stage we're at now by being a throwaway nation we didn't repair anything you know we repaired everything then and that's an observation was it all you, you couldn't um you couldn't afford to, to just we get couldn't the next thing in. You were, we you hadn't were, the money. You had to make do with what, yeah. with what you had. You've done it, yeah. And, and you, see, you, you see a way out to do it, you know. And and that was the way I was able to solve all them. And and, and, and I love doing all that. Yeah, yeah. I know music and singing has been a kind of a big part of your life as well. Oh, you know, yeah. You to tell I, me a little bit about that. We might get you to sing a song later on. But oh, just, yeah, that's all right. Just tell me a little bit about um, I was, just, just tell me how you, how you kind of got in got involved in that or what are your, what are your sort of... Your, your I, 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 I always interested, i tell you what I was interested in, tops of the town. I had, I, I was interested in them and I won the county tops here and we we had a night here that I had to be carried out to put whiskey down my neck, I was producing the show and in charge of it and and all and we got a slot in RTE Would I did a ski on the housewife of the year, uh, dressed up women, men as women and I went down a tree and we got a place in the top of the tops on the on, uh, in Dark Hives, or in Dublin somewhere <laughs> and all that and th- I used to love this I used to love the short sketches because if a short if a sketch fell I was gone and you had another one coming up if a play drags it's gone the whole the whole three acts is gone you know and that's why I like quickies yes and yes. Sh- and short stories and all and all that and we won the tops of the t- we won the tops of the parish and we won the tops of the county and we would done all this you know okay yeah um the the, the kind of the, the the comedy aspect was 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 kind of an appeal for you as well oh, you know? oh yeah oh yeah 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 and and music is great music and song and all is great because it's a therapy it's a therapy lads would bring me lad brought lad brought me to look at a tractor one even and he says, my tractor is finished, it's up the bog here, he says, it's finished, he said, the engine is gone. It. And I went up along and I be, I be, I went up along and talking to him and all, and now I was looking at this tractor and I started jigging and li- listening and jigging. And I would be singing, but I would be looking at every bolt that was in that engine, as well as singing. And this fella, the thief was burning off of him with, ex- with madness because I wasn't t- trying to tell him what was wrong. And the track that was going to be allowed, it was going to cost so much to do and so much to this and that and the other thing. And I'd be jigging away anyway. And to wind up anyway, I said to him, I said, I took off the air breather and all. So, so I, he says, what's wrong with the tractor? These dingy gone. No, it's not. I said, you were topping there in a whole lot of dust and rushes and everything. They're all gone into the air cleaner. And she has no oxygen going in and she, she stays up and a big black smoke come over and she stopped dead. That's right, he said. She couldn't get no air. The filter clocked up, and that was it. Okay. It was only a matter of taking off the oven and <laughs> cleaning it. Okay. You know. Um, I know you've uh, you've um, a, a strong tradition and a whole a whole um, selection of, um, of of pieces that you've put together, recitations and various yeah. various kinds of things. And we, we we might get a couple of examples on the on the tape as well. But just um just talk to me a little bit about that that whole. That whole world, kind of how how did you get um how did you get interested in it and how how do you sort of come up with your your ideas for um for these things? Uh, I be listening to me father used to be doing a bit of singing and lads singing and I'll just I got interested in it like you know and that was all and uh, I older lads was singing now there was a lad and I haven't it just somewhere at home now but I haven't had any he sang the the old Fenian gun and all a man and there was lads sang different things and I began to get interested in bits that people was putting together you know what I mean or how they were put together and that's how and I I became I, I don't know it could be a gift I don't know bad or good <laughs> you know I, I can I could I could make up a yoke now very quick you know and that would that would happen if I was Walking along or going along like a rank, some something just pick out something and make a little thing about it, you know. It, it could kind of happen anywhere or any time. An inspiration, and and you know, and uh, it's like a crossword. Uh, uh, one word 
can get you two verses or three if you are trying to make up something, you know. And it can, yeah. And did you ever have trouble memorizing it? Like a, 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 some of these things are, are quite long, I imagine. Do, do you, mm. how do you how do you keep it all in your head? I don't know, and I have long, I have long, I have long ones. Though, but you didn't hear, and I keep it. I don't know how I keep it in my head. I, I, I can't. I, I'm trying to explain it to you the way I, I'm talking to you now, and I'm also thinking of what I'm going to say next. Somewhere forward, somewhere, and the same as with the with the singing. If I'm stuck, I might start off and I might be stuck for a word, and I keep going. And I, I'd, I'd know how far I get, and then it had come to me. I made it. I said to somewhere. I don't know. Yeah. You know, or something. It's something that something that inspired me with things. You know, like. Do you remember your your kind of early sort of performances of this, or how how did you kind of how did you get involved in 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 doing it in um in a sort of organized way? Sure, I got involved in a hood players and our things like that and up in I was up in Moishal I with the Moishal hurling team and up around there I, I was with them and up around and would in plays with them and I happened on lads up there. Jim Nolan was a great character up in Moishal, he did since but he was a great he was a great character. He wrote a lot of stuff and the sister they used to do a lot of stuff up there. And uh, I got a kind of inter I don't know why I got interested in it but I was able to put words together quick. Very quick, you know, very quick, very quickly. Like, like off, off the top of your head, someone, yeah. someone says off the top. something on and you can yeah, you like, produce something. Yeah, I could, yeah, I could, yeah, I'd, I could, I could, I could, yeah. And I was very good with sounds, I I was terrific at, at the sounds of an engine now. Or I like I'd know the whole, I'd know the loose valve tappets and the big ends and the small ends and the gudgeon pins and the whole lot I'd, I'd be able to memorise and look at him and see him this minute Do you know in it I was able to for that I, was, I don't know why but I was yeah the principle of an engine is induction combustion power and exhaust yeah yeah it, it seems like there's a whole there's a whole kind of range of topics you'd you'd have um as well are there are there kind of particular subjects and things that you you sort of return to or do, are you are you always kind of looking for looking for different, different oh i am yeah 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 uh, when i do it i swore out with me a kind of i'm after achieving it i have it i swore out you're no. you're kind of ready to move on to the next one yeah yeah that's the thing yeah and see if it works yeah and I, w I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't uh, take much time would it if I, if I thought I wouldn't, no, little. And how, how long would it, would it kind of take to put it together or is that, is that like asking how long is a piece of string, is there, no, is no. there a short answer to that question? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, but I wouldn't, it, wouldn't take, it mightn't take too long. But the best time for to think is in the morning, early in the morning. If you woke up at five o'clock in the morning, the boys will tell you there they could hear me, uh, I could be humming something at really early in the morning. That, that's the time it'll all come to you. Yeah. Bits, I'll come to you. Will, uh, if you're stuck for a word you get, it'll come somewhere. Or something will happen and the word will pop out. You know. Do you write them down or is it, is it all in your head? That's all in my head. I write down you have. Oh, <laughs> I am a scrap man as far as paper is concerned. Every box and everything that I can get, I rips it up and I have it there and I have a pen and I'd put down a few words and if I got, if I was missing a word and I'd leave out, I'd skip it. If I was writing something, I'd skip it the whole time, you know. That's the way I done it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just tell me what you, what you have in your hand there, Chris. Well, I never travel to that baby music. I always have it in my pocket. And that's a jaw, a jaw harp. And, and I have that. Yeah. It brings it with me around. Do you want to give us a taster? I, yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
We're in we're in Rackards in in Killan here, which has been kind of recently um, recently reopened. Um, what are your what are your memories of this this place? <laughs> I'm gonna have a lot of memories of it. I have, yeah. Well, we always would be going to dances, of whether it was on bikes or what way it was. But I always had a bit of transport, and we'd be going somewhere, and we call this I call this the hub. You started. If you didn't get something to drink here, if it was only Lucozade or whatever you were drinking, if you didn't start here, it was like easy start. You started from here and I, I, I'd call it the hub and it was always the hub and that was it. And that was records and that's where we started from. And we could go anywhere then with a load of us in the car, in the car or an old van, I had vans and we'd go in the van and we'd have to meet in the hub in Killan and that was what I called my own mind. What does it mean to be to be back here, or how does it how does it feel to be kind of? Well, back you know, in something place? as fantastic to 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 see it, to be able to live, to see it, and and see it, and see the way it's all done up, and and fair play to the lads just after getting at it and doing it, and, and may it may it keep the flame burning away, as I said. Yeah, yeah. I I, I was with Bobby here, working at different things, and 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 sorting out different problems with them always. But the, uh, the story told about uh, this little house up the yard there and there was cattle in it. And Nicky was, they were testing the cattle and Nicky was testing them and Bobby was catching them. And that time there was no crucius. And there was a lad howling the door. There'd always have to be a man howling the door, they say, because they couldn't shut the door because if anything happened, they couldn't get out. Do you know, they have to have a lad on the door. So this other neighbour came up anyway and he says, where's Bobby? Bobby is in there. And what are that? They're catching cattle. And your man went to go in, and this fella says to him, Look, he said, Don't go in there. He said, That's no place for the ordinary man. <laughs> yeah, that happened, yeah. No place for the ordinary man. He said, Stay out there. Yeah. What were the, what were the records like? The, oh, the records, oh, they were gentlemen, yeah. Very, yeah, yeah, they were. Very nice, yeah. Very nice. No, they were very nice. The records were very nice, yeah. Very nice, and very, Bobby, very helpful, and all like that. And I, 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 I walked a drove a lorry here from Drew B to Carl and everything here for him and all and, and <laughs> I remember uh, drawing beat and there was a lad with us, three lorries with us and, and the, we didn't get to bring up any bring home any pulp and and I said to the lads who was with us, lad what lad driving, I said, Look at leave the lorry here in Carla. We won't I won't, he said, Bobby would go mad uh, if, if, if I left the lorry here. I said, he'd go mad if you had if you bring home the lorry and no load on it. Leave it till they'll load it and they'll be pulled on it in the morning. So that we, I persuaded the man when we come on. We come into Bala Murphy coming home and we went in for a drink. To get a drink in Bala Murphy in the pub. And this fella got a couple of beers on him when he got a big excited anyway. And bigger we headed for home. And when we come down here, I suppose it was half ten or maybe eleven o'clock, and Bobby, God forgive him, was out there in the back shed, welding as he always was in the night, and a big flame going out the welder and all. And he, he came out when he seen us coming in and, and all, and uh, this fella ran over to him, I kind of staggered over him, over to him, and and and, and uh, he says, We left the lorry, he said, in, uh, above in Carl, Bobby, he said, and I was right behind you, man, we did, I said. And we left there a bob I had above in Paddy Shorts pub in Bala Murphy. <laughs> and that was the terror. This was the flood that was not going to see anything, you know. Yes. And they were cracks like that. But they were great, they were great. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do, you, do you remember them uh, as hurlers? I do, God. I do. I do. I remember them as hurlers. I do. Oh, Jesus, I do remember them as hurlers, yeah. God, I sure They were fearless, yeah. Fearless. They were fearless, like, you know. But then they were big men and they were, Fearless and, and as Horland is getting back to big men again, like you know, as the big men is hurling well again in in places, you know. But they were all they were they were great men, yeah. They, they put kill on the on the map really and all. Yeah. Yeah. Would you have um would you have seen them would you have seen them hurl for Wexford as well? Oh yes I did, yeah. Your, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did, I did. I've seen them hurling for Wexford and yeah. your and all I got I did, yeah. So I rode a bike to Croke Park to the matches, to a match. Tell me about that. Oh yeah, I I rode a bike to the match. I said, I said to my father, I'm I, I'm going on the bike to the match, and uh, no training or nothing. Only had a good bike, and uh, 
The words he said to me was, I said, sure, he said, if you get up to two, they said, you've been holding going. So I went on anyway, and I rode the bike up to Dublin and up to Croke Park Gates. And this fella said, you can't bring in a bike here. I said, where's Pat Quigley, the PRO? Oh, what are you looking for him for? I said, get him, see, maybe he'd let me in. So he came to the seat anyway, and he said, let in that man. He said, if you were after coming as far as that man is after coming, he said, let him in. And that's what I done. Would have waited for Jersey on me. How long did that journey take you? God, I don't know how many. It took me a few hours anyway. Yeah, but I never saw you. I went. Uh, but from the time I got up on the bike, uh, outside of my own gate, there was nothing in my mind, only Croke Park. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. I, I, was, I, was, go, I was going there, and that was it. And and, all that, and I, I pulled to go war all my life, and I trained to go war teams. And trained them and everything and won championships with them and everything. Was loved. I loved sport and loved. I loved lads getting the best out of lads and, and praising them and getting the best out of them. I was able to get home with them, you know. And, and, and I was able to know what they were doing. And first and foremost, when you're at anything like that, you have to be able to do whatever you're telling the fella to do. You have to be quite capable of doing it yourself, you know. I remember one even, uh, there was some kind of an argument above uh, 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 while we were training the team and these fellas were not lad lift off or something and I said to him, I said, I'll tell you what I'll do now. I said, I'll, I'll take on the two years, I'll pull the two years. And you'd hear a pin dropping in the training session. And I did, done it. And that stopped that, there was never another word. Another time I was down in Dool and myself and another fella, he'd tell you the same, he was here himself and there was a lad and he was a, uh, you know the way you see on the ground and put your feet together and you pull up with a brush and all that. Well, this fellow was pulling up the whole country anyway and they couldn't be bare anyway. And, and, uh, and uh, he came over and he said, what about you? Are you no, you're saying nothing. But oh, I'm not, I said, no. And I said that the lad was with me. I said, go to the boot yard there. I said, and bring me in. I had an old pair of shoes on me. Bring me in my boots. Bring me in my boots here. And I got down on the ground with him and I stood him up, this fellow. And you'd hear a pin drop in the air as well. And that was it. Yeah. What did you do for, for training in, in tug of war? What was your kind of, what was your approach? Well, running and pulling weights like. Yeah, you start off at smaller weights like and you pull weights and all like that like. And running, fitness, running, leg, legs, get the legs right and all, yeah. Yeah. How has the area changed over your lifetime, Chris? The area, the area has changed. And, it's hard to describe the way it has changed because the hardiness is not in the, the, I don't know what happened. They didn't get the toughness, that the, the hardiness that the, our generation got. Okay. And I think it's back to the secondary school, back to, back to the school where, where after school they got, they got into doing something to see and it made them hardy. And I didn't develop them. They didn't develop the muscles and the hardiness. Uh, uh, some of them might have had it. More of them didn't. You know, you you have to be kind of bred tough to it. You know, you you're going up be a cow in a house or something, and she turns around and hits you wall up in the shoulder. Well, I mean, you can, you know, you can't have to put up with it, and go on and do what you're supposed to do. And then there's another thing. Then Paddy, you won't eat that, and Johnny, you can't eat this, and you know what I mean. And, and that's my opinion of it, but there's lovely, there's the grandest of lads out there, they are, there's nothing wrong with them at all, they're lovely lads out there and, and, and well capable of doing whatever they want to do, you know, they are they're, they're, they're a great generation out there, no, no, there's no problem at all, but uh, it, it has changed and it's, it's got, it's, 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 it, it kind of got too easy or something, I, you know, I don't know. Even to walk into school, you see, and even, I know I don't expect anyone to walk to school now, but, you know. Uh, in terms of the, in terms of kind of the, the, the villages of the, of the area, what's, what's different about, about the places, say, to, to, to how they were when you were growing up? But sure, sure, years ago, there'd be a couple of fellas in a wee place, like, you know what I mean? 
two or three fellas in every place, every place, have us job after the cattle and the sheep and all, and and, and clean no houses with sprungs and all, and uh, mechanics, m mechanical appliances has done away with all that now and all, all this stuff and self feeds and nuts and they don't have that, don't have to work, you know, and. That time there'd be an awful lot they see, there's no cock in a hay, there's no stack in a corn, there's no nothing now, that's all gone, you know. It's all all different altogether now, you know. Um, automation is the whole thing, the word now, electronics and automation, yes. you see. And surely years ago they backed the trailer into a house and you sprung out all the dung into the trailer and it went out and trapped up in the field and all, you know. And, and there's none of that now, you know. And after that, then, sure, and there's no, no one going much on bikes, but sure, they're trying to get him back on the bikes now. Yeah, and but sure, they're, 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 they're okay. They're, there's people scarcer, though, in the country now than the war. They're all gone into, or gone to the towns and everywhere, you know. Tell me a little bit about the the kind of folklore of the area. We, we, before we started the recording, we were, we were talking a little bit about, um, about cures, can you tell me tell me a little bit about about cures and folklore? Well, should I should have had uh, should have had I mentioned that they had the cancer cure there, the the cancer ward cure. They had that. My father had that, and my mother had it, and I knew about it, but I didn't do anything with it. And they had uh, the cures. They had cures for for uh, for. Uh, a wart and all. You cure a wart with a wedding ring and a, and a prayer. And you stop the blood with a prayer, and they all works. And uh, you make a cure for a burden. And if you got a bad burden, you make a cure with laurel leaves and lard. You boil the laurel leaves uh, in in lard. If you get the lard now, uh, same as you boil chips, and you strain it, strain a half into a glass and put it into a glass, and you have this cold ointment, you have this ointment in, and that's a cure for a burn. Laurel leaves and lard, and uh, different, 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 different things then. Because I suppose a lot of those cures are sometimes you know the association maybe with particular particular plants or, or that kind of um that that kind of thing what what are the sort of um what what are the, the, the kind of um say say um plants or or um or animals or birds that you you would have you would have um you would have have kind of paid paid attention to when you were when you were growing up oh birds are sure we we i tell you what you used to be around our place and they were lovely a lot of pheasants and lovely cock pheasants and all, an awful lot of pheasants, and they're all gone scarce now. And and uh, whether that buzzer or the warriors, the dapple could they'd be killing them too. But they're 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 nearly gone. There was always an awful lot of pheasants around, and then surely we'd have plenty of foxes too. And surely they'd take the hens too. You have to save the hens from them, and, and all that crack. And the fox, the fox would take the lambs as well, sure. Yeah. Would you would you have had that? Would you have had? Problems with foxes when you were um, well. The wood foxes to take, take the lamb. Should have to bring in. Well, the yours is all have been housed now, but they used to bring them into a little garden, or a little, a little small uh, half an acre or a quarter of an acre. Pin them in the night, you know, bring them into a place. And they used to, they used to leave a hurricane lamp with them in the night to keep away the fox. Hang you up in a skiff or somewhere, uh, leave it lighting to keep them, you know. Yeah. Okay. And then they had names on all the fields as well. Every field was named. Yeah, every field on on the land of how you have is named. Yeah. And do you, do you, do you, do you know those names or can you? Ah, uh, yeah. The the, the 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 daisies, uh, Nolan's field, the big field, the mountain field, the second top field, uh, Whittaker's bog, uh, the middle field, the field under the house, the spout field, the gatepost field. The 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 Sardle field, the White Oats field, and all names in them all. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. And there's there's the surnames there in a few. Were they were they kind of associated with previous owners or do, do you know? Yeah. Well, you know, well, the well, 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 the Nol the Nolans field would be in included with a previous owner. Yeah. None none of them there now. Like you know. Well, I have that bit of land that they had. You know. Okay. We have it. Yeah. Yeah. And. And all the different and 
the right away to the mountain and the place, the right away to the black stairs, it's called Pendles Lane and there's a spring well up in the middle of that and all that. Have you a, have you a particular place that you liked to go in, in the, in the, um, in the mountains or have you sort of a, have you a favourite spot? Oh sure, and the whole mountain is a favourite spot with me because I'm bounds and the, me bounds ditches on the mountain. I have a whole bounds ditch on the mountain like, and the mountain and then sure, Cahir's Den. Cahir, the, 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 it was supposed to be the outlaw sure. Yeah, tell me, tell me about Cahir's Den. Cahir, I don't know any, any, what I heard sure about him. He, he, he abducted the miller's daughter. Uh, out of the mill, uh, and I think the mill was in Castle Bore at that time, and he whipped her up into this on the horse and went on, and he asked, he said, a drink, a drink, my pretty maid, said Robin Cahiru, and then he caught her and brought her out with him, and they were supposed to have followed him, and injured them, and he fell into the, uh, into the, the den, but I don't know now about that, like, but that was the, ro- that was the rumour, but uh, that's it, and and the mountain sun that then is the last Sunday in July. That's that's where the where the Carla people and the Wexford people would meet there at the meeting, at the mountain Sunday. And that's the last John in July and that me and and I was also called Frock the Frockens would be getting ripe then to only be picking the Frockens. And they used to be buying Frockens that time and the, the, the people would be buying them and they'd be picking them, but for Frockens are very small, you'd be long time getting the stone of them. <laughs> And I don't know what they were using them for, maybe do your food, I don't know what, but, yeah. What, what are your memories of, of Mountain Sunday when you were, when huh? you were growing up? Would you, would, you have gone to, would you have gone to the meetings on, on I would have, Sunday? I would have, went, I went up there, I was I, I, was, I was I one there a few years ago, and I went up there, but there wasn't that much music in it, but there was music, there was, uh, used to be a lad bring up an, a tractor, and he'd have a tractor and he'd bring up a few stuff, with stalls, he had stalls and bring up a few stuff on it, and, uh, we get you get chocolate and you get stuff on and lemonade and all that time, but they're trying to revive that again now. I think you know, and there might be something in it this year again. I don't know, you know. Yeah, and then it's obviously as we're as we're recording, it's just um, it's just kind of around the around the corner. Um, yeah, it's the last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, ju- just just wanted to 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 maybe touch briefly about um, kind of place and and place identity and kind of wondering if you're in. I don't know if you're in in Dublin or in Killarney or or somewhere else. How would you describe the place where you're from? What what do you if if someone asks you where you're where you're from? What do you what do you say? To well, that somebody person? asked me where somebody asked me about Black Stairs or where I'm from. Well, how would I describe it? Well, I describe it as a place that have you worth coming to see the Black Stairs, worth walking, and it's easy, it's access, it's accessible. You'd walk it as 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 easy walk it, you know, and you'd walk up to the flat of the mountain, and then you could walk along along well, for a long way, along a higher way, yeah, yeah, and uh, it is worth seeing, like yeah, and sure uh, the the two planes fell on it. Sure, I found the plane that fell on it. Can I ask you about that? The, this was in nineteen eighty three, the the Cessna yeah. plane. Yeah. What 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 do you what do you remember about that? That was in on the seventh of September. 83. I was above in the workshop, in a little workshop of mine above in the house, and I heard the noise. And when I came in, my sister said to me, They're looking, there's a plane after hitting the mountain, they're looking for it. And I just said, Be Jenny, that passed up a while ago there, and if it's anywhere, it's in the Blackstairs Mountain. And the next thing, a crowd came in then, coming tonight, came in, a search party. And they were going to the mountain, and they asked me, "Did I know anything about it?" I said, "I heard it," but and they said, well, "Did you know there's anything wrong?" And wrong. I said, "I didn't hear anything wrong. Only the usual noise of a plane. There was nothing wrong with the engine, as far as I know. Anyone, anyway, I would know about an engine if it was wrong." And uh, that was all right. Anyway, they headed off anyway. A whole crowd of lads, and we went up a piece up to the bow of the mountain anyway, when it got dark and all and the search was called off. So I said, I'm going to go to the mountain. I'm going to find this. I'm going to go. And I asked would somebody come with me. So they did. Lads volunteered to come with me. And uh, we went on anyway and walked on and walked on. And we found 
a surround of the windscreen, like it'd be in the old Morris Miners, there were a chrome thing that kept in the wind, kept in the rubber, kept the rubber in place to seal the windscreen. And somebody said, somebody dumped that there. And I said they didn't. The plane is somewhere here, because nobody dumped there. Now, that was, that was it. We kept going away anyway, and we found it. And there were four people in it. And the pilot and the co-pilot and a man and woman passengers. And they were seemingly going to somewhere in Kilkenny to a, an engineering box or something from England or somewhere. And sure, they, they, they fell there and that was it and they were all dead, you know. Small plane. Um... Uh, Cessna. A little Cessna, yeah. Mm, yeah. And that was all. We prepared anyway then and left and done what we were supposed to do. We said a few prayers and we had a... Church of Ireland man with him too, and we, we told him to say whatever he was supposed to say. And we went down, another time you wouldn't be asking him that, and then we went down anyway, and we went down to Kiltaley to the yard station. And we we came down Colintra, that's at the foot of the mountain between Kiltaley and my place. We came down there, I went into a house, and I said to a woman, I want the car. I knew her, I want the car, I said. And... Uh, I, I can't tell you what I wanted for what I wanted. And we loaded up into the car and we went on. And we went on to the barracks and we knocked on the door and the woman opened the door and I said, where's the sergeant? And we were brought in. We said, we have to find the plane. We were brought in. And, all, and that was it. That was it. And then, sure then that plane had to be brought down and all like that. And I remember well, as somebody, someone, reporter one came from Dublin and she was there in the morning at, I don't know what time we were going up to two or three o'clock in daylight in the morning and this one was a, was a journalist with a pair of runners on her and she went the whole way to where the plane was and the stones and bushes and twigs and everything, it didn't matter what she met, she went through and I was with her going, we were going on along and she, she rode up and there was lads they didn't go as far and wrote more, but anyway, uh, that was it. And they took her down after, they took her down, they brought down across my fields and all. And it's above now, the back end of it is above now in my field at the house, still. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The late Johnny Carty, uh, the, the late Johnny Carty was with us, and his son Pat is going well still, and Thomas Kavner and Willie Rowe, they were, they were us, that's us. One of the one of the the areas that we're looking at in this um in this project is around um tourism. I'm wondering if um if if you had um if you had visitors or someone was asking you to um to recommend places to things to see or do in the in the locality. What what would you be what would you suggest to them or where where would you have brought people when um when you had visitors yourselves. Where would they brought them? Well, sure, when they looked up at the mountain, of course, the first and foremost, they have to be able to walk and get there and travel, travel. We can bring him a long ways, we can bring him a long ways, we can bring him up nearly to the, to the mountain ditch with, 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 with a vehicle, you know, bring him a long ways all the way up the lane and up up the lane. Uh, and that's the lane that, the lane that I'm talking about that we've been bringing him up now, at one stage there were 32 people lived in it. But that's another, that's, that's that they're gone now, but... We'll come to that after. But, uh, uh, do we, yes, we can bring him up. I'd, sure, I'd recommend him. Sure, Cahier's Den is there to be seen, like walk to Cahier's Den. And then, uh, the men in 1916 had a hideout in it as well. They were up there as well, they had a hideout. And all, and the hideout was in a position that they were able to see the Crossley tenders coming in. That road there, into Inniscarty. Into Killan here, they'll be seen from that that hideout. Okay. Yeah, and alert. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the kind of local history and heritage, or what are the what are the the, the things of the, the, the of kind of particular interest to you? Sure. The, 
the local, any local interest we had here was the, the local interest you'd have now would be the the be a sport, the be a hurling, and the be a camogie, and the things like that. Yes, right now was always know it for the hurling and all that. That that be in it, you know, and of course we we may forget about the forges and the things are all closed down and the garage some of the garages are closed down as well you know what i mean it's all gone it's all gone to the towns now you know the shops closed down and there were shops that you at one stage there was a grocery shop in killan here too and there was a post office and there was t things in it and should have closed you know but yeah how, how do you how do you kind of reflect reflect on that is it, it, it are you kind of sorry to see to see those things kind of leaving kind of small villages or what what's your well, well, well I, I, I am kind of sorry to see it in a way like because uh, I don't know whether it's going to come back or not because they won't be able to make a living maybe you know that's it you know we got this thing of going to town to the big super things and you know I mean you know but then another thing too you see what we done years ago too was we we cooked. They made they, they made all their own bread and they made all their own butter and and they, they made scones and they made everything they wanted. And they killed pigs and they had all they had all their own stuff. And this this was it too. They were self sufficient. Now, no matter what you want, if you want a couple of pounds of sugar now, a couple of you may go to in a scarty or somewhere for it, you know. And that's just the plain sailing of it. Yes. You yes. Know? Um would there would there have been visitors kind of coming to the area, say um, people who who might have lived in England who had grown up here, or you know would would, would there have been kind of outside visitors coming coming to the region when you were younger? Ah, uh, there would be, there would be coming, there would be, there be people coming, or there be people coming and going the whole time. Yes, there would, yes, there would be coming, yes, there would, yeah, but. You wouldn't see too much of them up around the hill now, you know, not not too much of them. They'd be keeping to the low, low road. And I tell you what, what, what the blessed well in Killan, there'd be a lot of people going to that. The blessed well over there in Killan, there'd be a lot of people going to that now, you know, and and definitely would like. As a kind of place of pilgrimage? A place of worship and pilgrimage. Yeah. Yeah, there would. Yeah, yeah. There would, there would there be people going to that. And there'd be people coming to see Kelly's grave as well. John Kelly, the wife in Killan, they'd be coming to see where he's buried. And that'd be it, like. I'm sure this was this was uh, he was ancestral spot around here, yeah. In That's right, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Associations with this, um, yeah. this building, and yeah, 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 yeah. Um, in in terms of um, in terms of of um, tourism, um, who um, who would you describe as the the ideal visitor to the area or are, are there kind of are, are there sort of is, is there kind of types of tourists that you'd you kind of like to see like to see coming well i'd like to see people coming that had be interested in looking around you know what i mean they had be they had take it that they had take something out of it there'd be a help to them you know what i mean like but um, then you see there again to get facilitated with Maybe it's going to kill on the way up, I think, anywhere to, 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 to be able to get something to eat and all like that. This is the thing, you see, you know, and all. But, uh, but it, it's, it's, it's a great place to have a picnic or go, you know, great place, yeah, yeah. What, what are the, um, what, what are the, I suppose, the, the, you touching on it a little bit in terms of tourism, but thinking about, about someone who would have, you know, kind of lived, lived in the area for, um, for a, for a long time what what are the what are the the sort of positives and negatives of living in a in a kind of upland area how um how have you kind of found things that the good and the bad well sure there's a lot of good in it but the when the weather gets bad then as bad you can be a bit isolated uh could uh, snow and it'll be a while going away but sure uh Taking the bad with the good, you'd often have the good would be good, like you know what I mean. It'd be, it'd be a, a great summer and all, lovely place in the summer and all, and everything. But be good, and you get you, you get used to it, you know. And people, if you only went down the country a bit, people would say, "How are you going on up in the mountains?" Years ago, do you know what I mean. You think, they think, you think they're hotter than when they'd be only down the, there a few yards, you know. <laughs> the snow would be a while going, the lanes would be blocked, you know. 
Yeah. Would that have happened to you? Were you high enough that that would have been a? An oh, I would. Oh, the lane. Oh, I can remember the roads closed, like you have to shovel the half it, you know. Yeah, but now they have gritters, they have yokes, and they go. But they'll do, they'll do the main roads anyway. And getting back to it again to go to the towns, you'll be generally able to get the road around here done. And if you could get that far, you'd get something. Do you know, like? Yeah. Do you, you you remember like? Local people having to having to do that themselves. Oh, and, yeah, um, yeah, I remember them. I remember it. Yeah, I can remember there was an awful snow in '47. Just can remember it, like you know. And later than that, there was a big, heavy snow on the road, completely blocked from Kilan up to where I live now here, Com- covered level with the ditches. You know, yeah, okay. yeah, okay. big falls of snow. Um, what what are your what are your memories? That, that you, you're you're old enough that that would have kind of left an impression at that stage in in. Um, that the, the big snow wasn't that they call it in, in 47. Yeah. Well, I was only a young lad that year, really. Yeah. Ch- ch- young lad, yeah. Yeah. I remember, I remember a, a neighbour coming over and, and with a walking stick and he writing his name on this big drift, you know, I can see it still, like, and he writing his name and it was massive on this big drift, you know. <laughs> yeah. Would you spend much time um, kind of walking the mountains and, and exploring kind of different different places or... Uh, had you had you particular places that you like to go? Well, sure. I used to. I'd be up there for. You'd be up there for weeks. A few weeks cutting the turf. You see, you'd be up there every day, and you'd light a fire on a stone. You get a big stone. You'd light a fire, a turf fire, and you boil the kettle. Then the go to a spring well. There'd be wells. Well, you get well water, and, and, and as we call it, and you'd you'd boil the water, and you'd get your grub that. That that way, but you'd light the fire on a stone. You wouldn't light it where to be heat or anything because the moon would take fire. So it'd be there'd be a big stone as big as this, maybe you know what I mean. And you'd light the light the fire on the stone, okay. and 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 cook put on a kettle on it. Yeah. And how how you said that you'd be you'd be up there kind of for um for a for a few weeks just just oh, yeah, kind of talk me through the, you'd the you'd process be, there with you'd the turf. Be, you'd be up cutting the turf. Uh, the what? There was turf and it was on top of the ground, like it was, it was only like a, what you call a scraw, you know what I mean? And there was more places and the bank could be that dipped in it, you know, you'd get cut down under. But mostly cut the turf and it'd be like, if you went out to dig up a big a sod, we used to call them sods anyway, they were sods of turf. And they'd be about the size of that now, you'd be cut about the size of that and left there with a spade. And then they might be, they might be taken up, when they dry a bit, they'd be clamped up like that to dry. And then they be putting little cocks to dry, and then they be they be drew down with a horse. You'd bring a horse and a sleigh up to there, and you'd load up and you bring it down to the farm. Then the nearest farm down to home, and bring it from that down home again. You know, yeah. So yeah, it would have been it, it was horses that you would have used to to get it um to get it down when you were yeah when it was, when it was done when it was dry then when I had dry out and get down and get into a house an old shed or a house and you had what to do you for the winter if you you know. Up cutting turf, and the people would be going to be a few families up there cutting it, you know. Yeah, and each family kind of had their own had their own plot. Or oh, they, 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 they could cut, they pick out a ridge of stuff and cut it, like and that. And you they'd have their own area to cut. And you, I could be cutting here, and other fellow could be cutting up there beyond or down at the crossing land, you know. I mean, they're cutting around, and they all had their own little heaps and rigs, and they'd be stucked up and stacked up, and yeah. And then I have a bog as well. I have a bog, and there's about eight foot of turf in it at the moment. But I, do, I didn't cut. I don't cut it. We used to cut that then when we didn't cut it on the mountain, you know. But you're not allowed to cut turf now, no. How but, uh, do you feel about that? Huh? How do you feel about that? Oh, I didn't. I didn't feel any way about it, like you okay, know. Okay. No, okay. No, I, I, I didn't. No. But the, there's a lot of turf in the bog I have now, and there's about there's a lot of acres in the bog, and there's a lot of turf, and there's an awful lot of. Uh, things in the bog too, you know, the kind of different plants and all, but I wouldn't know the half of them, you know, in the thought. All them. Had you, um, from when, when, when you were, say, up on, 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 on kind of higher, higher ground, just, um, just describe what the, um, what the, what the landscape is like, or what, what can you, what can you see? Oh my God, what can you see? Jesus. You can see the whole county. You can see the whole, all Ross Lear, you can see the whole York when you're up there. Oh, it's beautiful. The scenery is beautiful. I forgot about that when I was talking about Black Stair, but the scenery is something else, I tell you that. Yeah. Oh, God, it is, yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, the, 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 
the people, my father and them used to be pointing out the places, you know, where you'd be able to see the hook and see uh, the lighthouse in the hook and all that. And you could see that in the night flashing anywhere and you up there, you know. And all the different places. But now the problem is, lads are up and they wouldn't know the places either, they know, to look at. But to be able to find them with the phone and all now, anyway, to find them in the map and the phone. But the scenery is, you see Ross Lair and all, you see the ships coming in and all, yeah. Has the, has the landscape kind of changed oh, over the your, landscape over has your changed. time? Oh, yeah. yeah. The ditches is all gone out of the, where there was four, three and four fields in places, now there's only the one. Oh, yeah. Why is that, or how how is that how is that the case? Um, yes, to, to make bigger fields for the machinery. Okay. Headland, okay. too many headlands. There are too many going around with too many ditches, and the the, the big machines, the big machines, run away with the with the with the with the, with the hedge rows and the fields. They're all they're all anywhere they can be now. They're all, but the bit the high have now, uh, there's no change, and it has all the same. The ditches are in hand. Uh, the ditches as a, as, a, as a shelter for animals and all anyway, you know, they were, they were a shelter, but they took them over. There's not much shelter in a wire fence that went through the middle of the field, you know, and, yeah. W- would, you, would you kind of always have had animals or...? Well, yeah, animals, sheep and, 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 and a few cows and a few calves and uh, like that, yeah, and you'd, you'd, you'd rear up them and you'd sell them, bring them to the, bring them to the fair at that time and you'd have to drive them to the fair that time. Then a young lad, you'd have to go to the fair with him, into an escorty, or, or Burris or somewhere. And when the escorty mostly would the cattle and you'd drive them in and the jobbers would buy them off you there then. Yeah, but then you'd have to leave them. Sometimes you'd go a piece, you'd go from here maybe to Cam, leave them in a the field down in Cam belonged to somebody, or leave them in a the field in, in an escorty. There was a field there in Cherry Orchard in an escorty. And we used to put stock in it too, the morning before, the, the night before the fair, you know, and you'd get them the next day then. Okay. The way you wouldn't have to drive them, because when you bring them out on the road, they go, they go jumping across every ditch, you know, and you get hard to put your, that's, that was it, driving them on. So you do, you do it, you do it the day before to? Yeah, you could do it the day before, if you, if you, yeah. you could do it the day before, ask the man to let, let, let him in, and, or you'd put him somewhere, or a few sheep would be the same, like, you know, yeah. What? What was what was Fair Day like? Describe what what Fair Day involved. Well, your Fair Day involved uh, that time the cattle or the sheep or whatever we'd have, I'd have to be parked on the street, and you'd have to have somebody mind them. The people that owned them would be around, same as if you had them outside the door there. And then, of course, what happened then is the people didn't want that in the town either, and that that all disappeared then too. You know what I mean? Because they were, they were upsetting the whole set up, like you know. But that there was a few fairs I was at, yeah. And then the march came, and the march then came. Yeah, what was the difference between the march and the fair? What, what and what, what? How did that kind of change? Well, well, happen? well, well. That was that was that was different too. But that was better too because you had the way here animal, and you had more buyers around the ring, and you had you know what I mean. That time you'd have a lad in the march and or the fair, and he come over and he'd offer you so much, and and then another fellow come and offer you a few pence more, and there'd be you know what I mean. There'd be lads working you up and you wouldn't know where you'd be so in the mart you were better you know it was better all right like you know and d- d- I'm, I'm, uh, am i right in thinking that the the space would have been different as well like the fair the fair would have kind of taken over the whole oh yes it would or do you need to take a red hall slaney street and the streets in town like you know whole area blocked off like you know what i mean and sure it couldn't happen now if that was to happen now it couldn't happen you know <laughs> couldn't happen no yeah, because presumably you you know you you animals kind of all over the yeah you would yeah main, you would yeah main yeah, streets yeah, and yeah 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 the fair of, and the fair of Boris Boris was a big white town then in that was more room in that than in a Scotty down around Slaney Place and in a Scotty and there wasn't much room and then the pig fair was up on up in the top of the town and the man above the man on the top of the town the pig fair and in a Scotty but the pigs would be different the bunions and all small pigs they were in the horses cars they seen they then hooked the horse and they'd lay them into into a yard and in a stable or somewhere and leave the car there with the pigs in it you know okay okay yeah. did you um you, you you never kept pigs yourself did you or oh, we had pigs yeah yeah sows and bonny and bonhams yeah okay yeah. okay what was the best thing about about living in this this area or what what makes this area special the the friendliness of the neighbors and they were so helpful all down through the years 
the, the, they were fierce, helpful, helping every way. No matter what you'd be at, they'd, give, you'd be giving them a hand, they'd give you a hand and you'd give them a hand at something else. And that was part of it. We were drawn in hay, somebody came to give you a hand, pitching it, and, and they gave you a hand when they were trashing. And, the, the, the help would be all come to you because for a trashing day you'd want 25 or so maybe people around because there was five or six on the mill and there'd be two or three pitching shafts and there'd be a couple on the straw reckon there'd be a lad taken out the chaff and there'd be lads drawn away the corn on a truck in sacks from the from the mill and putting it into a sh store or a shed or a house and all and you wanted all them and then you had to go around for 20 days when they'd be trashing and give them a hand and some lads would send two men and all the different things and that was the way it was all the awful helpful yeah it would have been a huge part of of um I would. Of life around here oh yes it would many, would yeah many, yeah that yeah many days involved i would yeah they would told all them things yeah no matter what they were at and w would you have seen much of a change in terms of the kind of machinery that was being being used on on farms and that kind of thing oh god sure the change is shocking sure the change is shocking sure that was a big thing years ago if you had a tractor with a two side plow and now they have a re reversibles four and five sides you know turn them up and go on plow one way and massive yokes all together and they had a, a if you had a disc at that time you had a you were great you had a, it was a right yoke now they wrote the vators and all kind of spike harrows and all kinds of yokes you know Big change altogether, machinery wise. Yeah. Everything. Is there a what's the what's the thing you'd like to change about the area, or is there is there anything in particular you'd like to change about the area? Like to change about it. Yeah. Igor, sure. I'd like to see it going on as well as it could. Anyway, that's all. That's all for that. I'd like to see it going on. I'd like to that the people would be all happy in it and everything like that and. Uh, I think it's a great place for the youth growing up and uh, no trouble or no nothing around and a quiet place and a nice place to live and now that they have the electricity and water supply and they have everything that they hadn't years ago, it's, it's a great place, it's able to cope with anywhere, you know, yeah. What are the kind of challenges facing the, facing the area, do you think? The, the, the challenges in the area would be uh, bad weather of a chem, it'd be, it'd be, you, you might be grounded for a while, but then that wouldn't be too bad either because now there's refrigerators and to be able to get there up the what food to keep them going and all. And the only thing it'd be if it got real bad, it'd be get hardship feeding the stock and all, and that'd be all, you know, things. And people maybe, maybe wouldn't get to go work and all, but. They're talking about putting buses on the road and all, and should that be a big help now if they got them on the road? Be a big help, and railways, they're talking about that as well, and everything would be a help, like. The bus would be a great help to bring people from town to town and around wherever they'd want to go. Yeah. Are there kind of particular traditions or practices that would have been, um, that would have been done in the area that, that, um, that have kind of died out, or it, it, what was the area kind of, Associated, or were were there particular people or particular families who were who were involved in um in Anton kind of um particular? Well, you see, the small builder and the blacksmith and the small lad has all gone. The as a big contracting job now or nothing. They're all working in building these houses, and there's a heap of lads employed in the one place and all. There's no not much individualism. Is um, uh, years ago a uh, lad or a couple of lads would build a whole dwelling house and they do they do the most of it they do a hall nearly except maybe the some of the electronics and the plumbing and now it's different there's a whole yoke is a whole crowd doing it you know there's no much years ago you had the carpenter and you had the block layer the individual you know they came and done a bit of work and that's the kind of gone out now you know is there anything that um is there anything that that um that I haven't asked you about that um, that you want to that you wanted to touch on or to mention was there um, was there anything that you want to you want to bring up? God, I suppose uh, it's not easy to think of something like this. I want to bring up, you know. I know that they'll have to they'll have to go to get the country going. They'll have to put they'll have to bring something to the rural areas. They will have to, you know. They'll have to. 
and but uh, yeah, they'll have to. You'd have no use in bringing people around the area to show them the mountain if they had nowhere to get grubber in. You know, this is the thing. You know, they they'd have to be some way of entertaining them, really. You know, and I suppose that'll come as well. They're talking about a big thing taking off now would be camper vans. They were a big thing. But of course, they would be mobile to be able to bring them somewhere and get. Yeah, that 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 be an idea now for for someone to start up a place to a place to put down them put them camper vans. We could have to have electrics and septic tanks. You'd have to have the whole set up for that as well, you know. But it'd be an opener for the like of that if someone wanted to do it. If they had the money to do, it. you know, they'd be able to set up in an area like Killan here or somewhere, you know. Yeah. And that service the whole area, you know. Yeah. And you have to be wired up for all that. Uh, wired up and geared up. Yes. Yeah, but yes. that that'd be a good thing because if they have to go if they have to go to Inascorty and come out to look at the mountain or from Wexford and have to go back again then to get organised, you know, it takes the good out of it. The, the, what they'd like to be able to do now as people I think is go up and walk around the black stairs and come back down to Killan here or it's around here or some of the areas to a park where they'd have a, where they'd have something or somewhere to stay and look back at. Uh, where they were after being, you know. Yes. And like, and yeah, I think that'd be the way forward. That'd be. I think that'd be a thing. Yeah. Lovely. And that's it. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, that's mighty. Chris, thanks very much for um, for being so generous with your time.